The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, is the most authoritative body in the world on climate change. In 2007, it confirmed it's at least 90% sure that greenhouse gases generated by mankind are contributing to recent increases in global average temperatures. The IPCC is also at least 66% sure that warming caused by humans is already affecting many of the planet's physical and biological systems. And if we don't take action now, the future impacts of climate change could be huge affecting the natural and the human environment. Those changes will bring about impacts across society, the economy, what the countryside looks like, what, the, what town centres look like, how people behave, how plants and animals respond. So it's going to impact them on everything. In this programme, we look at four very different human and animal habitats as examples of how climate change may affect our world. We begin with Africa, which the IPCC believes could be very vulnerable to change. Research indicates that by 2020, because of the results of climate change affecting rainfall patterns, between 75 and 250 million people in Africa could have severe problems due to lack of water. In some countries, agriculture that depends on rain might produce only 50% of current crop yields. The area that is climatically suitable for growing crops could shrink and the growing season gets shorter. The seriousness of climate change depends not just on the scale of the change itself, but on people's ability to adapt to that change. Well, some people are much more able to adapt to change. For example, here in Britain, we've got um, a social system that sort of supports um, people in need. Um, and that can make us more sort of resilient to any sort of change. Uh, that's not to say that we're definitely going to be able to deal with climate change and that we won't need to adapt in any sort of way, but the impacts could be a lot more severe in places, for example, in Africa, um, where there isn't a lot of money and there isn't uh, the money to plough into technological change. Or if you rely on one particular crop, for example, and your crop fails because of uh, the, the monsoon rains not coming, then that can really impact on, on your life. Variations in climate are already causing problems in parts of Africa. For example, over 40 years, Lake Chad has shrunk to around one-tenth of its former size due to a drier climate and farmers taking water from it to irrigate their crops. And that shrinkage is making life very hard for fishermen who depend on the lake because fish stocks are decreasing. It's a bit of an irony, really, that Africa, for example, is going to be really hard hit by climate change because they've hardly contributed anything to the world's global carbon emissions. They haven't burnt as much fossil fuels, for example, as America or Britain, and yet they're going to be the ones who will see probably the impacts first or be least able to deal with these impacts. Bangladesh also faces serious potential consequences from climate change, from floods rather than droughts. The country has a tropical climate, with monsoons that bring intense rainfall and sometimes produce flooding, like these catastrophic floods in 1998. The flooding happens quite readily because Bangladesh is a flat, low-lying country, crossed by major rivers. It's also one of the most densely populated countries in the world, with over a thousand people per square kilometre. That's about four times the population density of the UK. That makes it very difficult for people affected by floods to go anywhere else. What's really worrying scientists is that Bangladesh will become increasingly vulnerable to flooding from the sea. When the oceans become warmer, the water in them increases in volume. That leads to rises in sea level. So low-lying coastal areas are more easily flooded and the rivers can't flow into the sea effectively. In Bangladesh, sea levels could rise by 30 to 50 centimeters by 2050. 
As average temperatures increase, things could be made even worse by more intense rainfall and increased meltwater from Himalayan glaciers which lie to the north of Bangladesh. The combined effects of climate change could mean at least one twentieth of the country could be lost to the sea, and the salt water from the sea could damage the remaining agricultural land and freshwater fisheries. So far, we've looked at the potential impact of climate change on two very vulnerable types of human communities. But there are parts of the natural world that are also extremely vulnerable. Most of the Arctic is an ocean that freezes into sea ice during the long, dark winter months, with a brief thaw during the summer and then a refreeze in the autumn. At first glance, it may look like a frozen wasteland, but in fact, it's a complex ecosystem. Plankton are at the bottom of the food chain, providing food for small fish and for some whales. Small fish are eaten by larger fish, and seals eat the larger fish. Right at the top of the Arctic food chain is the polar bear, which survives mostly by hunting seals. Arctic foxes scavenge on the remains of the polar bear's meals. The polar bear is superbly adapted to the Arctic environment, with thick fur to insulate it from the cold and furry feet that help its paws grip the ice. Polar bears spend most of their time out on the sea ice, hunting for seals. But in the summer months, when some of the sea ice has melted, they're forced to live on the land. They may scavenge birds' eggs and other scraps to get by, but essentially, they fast for three to four months until the sea ice reforms and they can start seal hunting again. Polar bears have adapted to survive this period of fasting, but now they face a threat to their survival. With climate change, the sea ice will start breaking up earlier. This means that uh, more of the ocean will be water rather than ice, so they have to use more energy to travel around. As polar bears spend more time swimming, uh, rather than uh, walking on the sea ice, they use more energy, and this increased energy means that they have to eat more. But actually, if they can't uh, find their seals, their, their main prey, then their body condition will start to deteriorate. And it comes to a certain point where uh, female polar bears can't actually, they don't have the body mass in order to reproduce, and that means fewer polar bear uh, cubs and uh, a lessening survival rate. Research that we've done here at the Tinsel Centre has been looking at how polar bears are going to be impacted by climate change. We've had 10 of the world's polar bear experts um, talk to us about how they think polar bears are going to be impacted by climate change. And actually, the impacts by 2050 could really be quite severe. In some areas, um, we could see polar bear populations declining by as much as 50%. Many thousands of miles away, billions of tiny animals are feeling the heat too. Although they may not look like it, corals are made up of colonies of minute animals called polyps living within limestone structures they build. To survive, the polyps depend on even tinier plants. It's the plants that produce the colors in the corals. The plants photosynthesize to make food, just like plants on land. The food they make nourishes the corals too, while the corals provide the plants with a safe place to grow. A partnership like this, where both organisms benefit each other, is known as symbiosis. Coral reefs need just the right combination of warm water and sunlight. Many are located fringing small islands, often in less economically developed regions. A reef may be important to the island in many ways, for instance, sheltering it from stormy seas and supporting local fisheries. Reefs also attract tourists. 
the economy in some areas really depends on coral reefs. For example, Fiji, a lot of their tourism economy, or in the Caribbean, it actually uh, depends a lot upon these uh, coral reefs and diving and snorkeling that goes associated with it. And obviously people who go to have these activities actually stay in hotels and spend their money in restaurants. And as these coral reefs might be impacted by climate change, these activities will necessarily decrease, um, which will lead to an impact on the local communities. Corals are very sensitive to temperature, and even if the oceans warm up by only 2 or 3 degrees centigrade, it's enough to kill a lot of the tiny plants. When they die, the coral loses its colour in a process called coral bleaching. If all the plants die, the coral will lose its food source, and it will die too. Now, scientists fear that a range of additional changes resulting from rising temperatures will make it even harder for coral reefs to survive. Sea levels are expected to rise as the water in the oceans expands with rising temperatures. But coral reefs need plenty of light for photosynthesis and if they find themselves too far below the surface of the ocean, they won't get enough light. As the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere rises, the oceans absorb more. A chemical reaction in the water makes it more acidic, and that makes it harder for corals to build the limestone structures they need to protect them. On top of that, it's thought that climate change may increase the intensity of storms, adding to damage on the reefs. There are other factors too, unrelated to climate change, which damage coral reefs, such as water pollution caused by humans. If reefs had to deal with only one threat, they might be able to cope. But the combination of all these stresses makes scientists worried about the future for coral reefs. These are just four examples of the very serious predicted consequences of climate change. And it seems that some changes are already underway. But the situation is far from hopeless. I actually feel quite positive about the future. If we all start to take action now, we can avoid a lot of the worst impacts of climate change. Predictions about the impacts of climate change can make the problem seem overwhelming and insoluble. But the human race does have the power to make a massive difference to what actually happens in the future. It's up to each one of us to choose what we'll do about it.